Good afternoon and welcome to episode 25 of Will You Review My CV? I'm your host, Alan Wozni, and today's episode is a focus on not only healthcare, but also on a real career pivot. The job seeker in question, she was a healthcare administrative administrator, uh, and she had responded to a post in July 2019 uh, made by LinkedIn influencer Bridget Hyacinth. Now, her words were very, very brief. I'm interested. Can you comment? Can you connect me to positions in Central Florida? So I know a little bit because back in July 2019, I attended, I followed a lot of Bridget Hyacinth and she's a LinkedIn influencer. She does a lot for job seekers in the space. And she typically would post think comments like, like my post, uh, forward it to anybody that's relevant. And, um, and I will, you know, I will like your post. I, something to that effect. So likely when Laura Huber, she responded, um, probably in that, that vein where she was trying to get uh, connected with the Bridget's uh, network. Now, Bridget has a network of 3 million people. It's quite extensive, maybe more today. Anyway, um, the focus on healthcare really got my attention. Because by that time, in the summer of 2019, I had worked in advisory roles with two, two healthcare startups. One was called Horizon, a UK-based startup. They were focused on using blockchain uh, to monitor prescription adherence by patients. So if, to, to give a, just a brief on what adherence, drug adherence is, basically think of when you take uh, a prescription for antibiotics and you don't finish it, you feel good, you stop finishing it, but that throws off the data, the healthcare officials, the healthcare administrators, the data that they use to whether a drug's effective or not, if people aren't adhering to the drugs, and sometimes elderly or people that just have, you know, maybe amnesia or whatever it is, they forget to take their pills. So this was actually pretty innovative. I was, I just got the blockchain side, but when James, James, um, when he reached out to me, he's like, wow, I'm like, I get that. I get the two together, how the blockchain could be triggering, triggering pay payments and so forth. And the second one was that I was working for at that time in July, 2019 or summer, by, by the summer of 2019, uh, it was a company called Digifarm. Digifarm was out of the was out of Switzerland, and they were seeking to use blockchain similarly, but they use blockchain to track and monitor performance based drug contracts. So, think about you know most drug companies or pharmaceutical companies they, they would sign a contract. And again, I'm not the expert, but this is this is what I learned is that the pharmaceutical companies and, and healthcare providers would sign contracts for uh, just regular drugs. They produce drugs and then they get paid. But the performance-based drugs worked a little differently. Uh, if the drug performed as expected, they would get the drug companies would get paid. So, and in this case, there was very at that time, as I understood, it was very manual process, very manual to, you know, to to monitor those those contracts. So the proposal there was to put that on the blockchain, write the smart contracts, which trigger when payments when the contract conditions are met, automatically release payments through the blockchain, through smart contracts. So that I, I got that as well. But I'm no, I'm no health expert by any means. Uh, my focus has always been is on the money, the money that has been invested, significant money that is, has been invested into innovative healthcare companies across the globe. So this was pre-COVID. Think about that. Uh, that money typically, so that, you know, there's been a significant investment in space subsequent during COVID and subsequent to COVID. But back then, 2019, uh, the money that I was sort of following or found out, you know, was typically coming from the venture capital, where I saw the venture capital companies uh, and the investments that were reported in the newsletters such as Strictly VC, which is a TechCrunch publication, a TechCrunch newsletter, Venture Beat newsletter, Crunch-based newsletter, uh, UK TN or UK Tech News, and Finn SME. So those are my go-to, and I still get the newsletters daily. You, you get the feeds. Um, there's not only healthcare, but when you're looking at healthcare, when you're focused on healthcare and you're working for healthcare companies, that's all you see. It's like, it's like when you see it, uh, you, you buy a new car, it's all you see on the road is your car. I, now, I, don't, have, I don't own a Tesla, but I tend, to look at, I tend to notice when Teslas are on the road because they're quite unique. And, and, you know, and, and Elon Musk creates a lot of uh, noise. But anyway, the money that I saw in healthcare had two, was kind of two-sided impact or was really important. The first is on the investment side. 
the venture capital companies, they tend to hire, at least when I, I'd see it, and I, maybe they, they hire other people, but they tend to hire experts that can advise them on their target company. So there's the money people, the Goldman Sachs, the Morgan Stanleys, and then there's the medical professionals, the medical doctors, the MDs, the PhD scientists, the pharmaceutical experts, the chemists, the biologists, and the similar personnel that can help advise the investors, the non-tech people, help the money people make the decisions. And then on the other side, the companies that are the tech startups, the healthcare tech startups, they tend to hire similar medical professionals to help them grow and scale their business. So in order to provide recommendations to this job seeker, I thought it would be important to highlight the healthcare related companies uh, and investors that I found located in Florida. Now, that was at the time in July 2019. Some of that's changed. You'll see later when I go into the slides, uh, into the slides. But so I, my focus was to give an information on healthcare related in general, the space and any inv innovation and investors in, that were located in Florida. So the rest would be up to her and, and let her figure out if uh, this was useful. Let's dive right into the PowerPoint presentation I prepared. And let's see, I'll share my screen here. And there we are. Do I get that? Why am I? Oh, here we are. Okay, so slideshow. Yeah, okay. So this is episode 25. Will you re review my CV? April 16th, 2022. The advice I'd given, uh, this was number 222. And for the two followers or listeners out there, or viewers, um, you'll probably know that I've done more than 430 such um, submissions on LinkedIn, all of them on LinkedIn, by the way. Uh, this was Laura Huber. She's a healthcare administrator based out of Florida, USA. I don't know, the, I think it's Ocala, it's called Ocala or Ocala, Florida. Uh, Laura, if you're watching this, if I'm gonna send you the link. <laughs> Forgive me if I got that wrong. Anyway, this was on July 17th, 2019 on LinkedIn. So as I mentioned earlier, Laura had replied to a comment on Bridget, a post of Bridget Hyacinth. She's a LinkedIn influencer. And it was very brief. I'm interested. Can you connect me to positions in Central Florida? So I, I again, based on the healthcare at the time, the focus was on um, my overview. So this is the overview. Here, the overview of what I recommended. Career websites. Back in 2019, I was... I, look, I've been overseas for a long time. So some of these career, other than monster.com and Yahoo jobs, I didn't know a lot of the, you know, I, I lived in the Middle East for 10 years. I didn't know a lot of these career websites. So <laughs> in 2019, I got, whoa, it's like a kid, kid in a candy store. I was, I was just laundry dumping. And now I, now I just, they're annoying. There's so many of them. It's not annoying, but it just, you see commercials, you hear commercials on, you know, I, you see a lot of them these days. So I should have known because if, if people people probably thought, so what? There's not anything new. But anyway, then AngelList. AngelList is, was a go-to very, I mean, uh, the, AngelList is, is, a, is, a, is a repository of startups and a lot of innovation. Um, certainly, if you're looking for, you know, to help them in, in certain non-tech roles, AngelList is a great source. And then I looked at healthcare innovation that existed it's a handful of um, startups that, that I came across through my, my research. And then the healthcare venture capital, there's a, there's a few names that are well known and they tend to pop up all the time when there's new funding announcements. And then just, you know, again, LinkedIn outreach. I gave this advice to the first probably two, 300, just the, the simple stuff that I learned way back in. And Craig, um, I'll give you, you know, Craig, my mite uh, back in uh, Qatar Solar. He gave me, you know, the tools, learn about social media. I, I, I put, uh, Craig, uh, <laughs> if you ever watch one of these, you know, hats off because he, he, he was really, uh, he helped me a lot in the early days when I was kind of getting social media and the LinkedIn outreach, it was just simple. We were like sitting in the office at Qatar Solar and he's like, yeah, this is simple stuff. It's free. So anyway, I did a lot, first few hundred, uh, I gave advice on LinkedIn, how to I use LinkedIn and I don't do it anymore, but just, I happy to share because it's so simple. So, um, you know, so looking back, you know, the job search websites, the career and job search websites, 
I, I kind of the same I laundry dumped him, gave them to everybody. But there was Fairy God Boss. I, I like their website. If you go to their website, it's pretty cool. It's a career community for women. It lists jobs, reviews, resources, and advice. And it, it's controlled. You, you, you don't access any of that stuff, the good, the good meaty stuff, unless you, you sign in and become, become a member of their community. And it looks like there's a lot, there's a lot, of, um, there's a lot of resources under the hood. The reviews are kind of cool. Like, I guess reviews of companies and, you know, that, that's probably really beneficial. I don't know if it's like, a, you know, a review, say like a, a restaurant Yelp review or something, but I, you know, I got to imagine that's helpful to some job seekers if they want to know what a company and so forth. Land it, uh, career fulfillment. They've got personalized, they, it, I guess it's, it's, works, it's really meant for the job seeker. They do personalized pathing, career path, coaching tool. They have a lot of tools on their website. And they have a mobile app. They're mobile enabled. So probably pretty helpful. And then Enzyme Health. They were, back then they were uh, for clinic clinicians and they were, you know, a, re a repository for uh, helping clinicians find roles. Now they've been acquired by Wheel. So Wheel is a marketplace, a dynamic marketplace. They offering virtual first care. So it's, I, I believe it's more, it's, it's kind of the web web MD on drugs. Like it's just web MD at the next level where basically physicians get paired with, uh, you know, patients, no matter where the physicians are, I, I, I might get this wrong, but I, that, that's how I understand is dynamic using natural language NLP. They've raised over 150 million. So wheel is wheel <laughs> wheel wheel has uh, raised a fair bit of money over the last couple of years. And they came, they got, I got, they came to my attention last year. They raised about 50 million. Recently, they raised another 150 or maybe another 100 million. I don't know. But um, anyway, they bring together physicians with health companies, labs, pharmacists. And they do, I think it's really interesting. If you go to their website, it's called White Label for Small Practices. It's kind of like, you know, if you go to the drugstore, you go to the, uh, most grocery stores today, and there's the label of the grocery store, like President's Choice, or if you go to Kirkland at Costco, that's a white label. Somebody who makes it en masse or in bulk, in bulk, and they produce that white label product and you put your label on it, they've done it for small practices who they, they will give them these tools, but they won't, take, they won't take credit for it. They'll just work with small practitioners, small clinics, pharmacies, or whoever, and they call it the white label. We'll give you the tools. It will give you the software, I guess, to help this work in your network. Um, and they white label it. They don't take credit for that. So they probably get a fee, but they're not, they're not promoting branding. So that's pretty cool. And then Convey IQ, um, it's a candidate engagement platform. And I guess, you know, if you need help and they're there to help you and uh, help you along your, your uh, path. And then a couple other ones, Teamable. It's an employee referral uh, platform. So like, these are more for employers or enterprise. ZipRecruiter, those are one of the ones. Have you ever subscribed? to Sirius XM, ZipRecruiter's always advertising on there. And you'll see them on TV if you ever watch television. But they're an online recruiting platform. And back in 2019, I was like, oh, cool. I, I didn't know <laughs> they're a competitor to monster.com. And then some other ones, again, recruiting tools for enterprises, a ton more. This is not meant, this was not an exhaustive list and it certainly isn't today. Um, but there was Avra Talent, Career List, PRZ, PRC Resources, uh, not the People's Republic of China. I don't know what the PRC st stands for. And then smart recruiters. So those were the ones that, that I dumped and, and, and passed off to Laura Huber back in uh, July 2019. Those are recruiting tools for, for enterprise, those last three or four. But then I move on to AngelList. Now, AngelList, I used to use it religiously. I, I'd go and kind of look, you know, each where they located you know, the types of the city, right? You can go real granular on there. You, you can set the search algorithms. And, but the problem I have today, when I look at it today, it always looks at my, I should use, a, you know, I should use Google Chrome because it's, it, it looks at my, where I am, my ISP and it all, the IP address. And it always goes to Calgary based companies or Canadian based companies or CFO related roles. And I, I for some reason I can't, I, I can't get the same level of granularity and localized in across the globe or across North America, anywhere, any city. I need to change something and, and get my, hide my IP address. Anyway, back then um, there was 10,000 startups across America. There was at the time pre COVID, there was probably 40,000, 30, 40,000 
um, companies listed. America usually had 30 to 40 percent of all of those globally. Um, across Florida, there were 349. And in, in Orlando, which I believe was close to where um, Laura resides or was living, it was 49 startups listed on there. So not, it was not healthcare. It was just, just giving an overview of the companies on there. But when I changed the, uh, the search to include health and flora, Florida words, it, healthcare, there was healthcare roles, 24. There were health and wellness roles, 11. And in life sciences companies, uh, four. So there was some other, some other, you know, there, if you go deeper, that was a deeper dive. And then looking at innovation. So I have three slides here. And because there was a lot, I kind of lumped it into um, just healthcare SaaS, software as a service, virtual reality or augmented reality, machine learning, AI type. That's the next level. And then the last one, just specialty. So the first three, um, Cyrus MD. It's a virtual healthcare for employers and staff. So I think it's, it, it helps you if you're working as for, so for a company, they work with companies and gives them information for, I guess, if you're working at a company and it, it, it localizes it for your, or specializes it for your company. Doc Lib was out of, Doctor Lib out of France. It's a French, I saw the announcement way, probably wasn't too far off at the time. They raised some funding and mobile but you know when you go to their website it's all french I, I couldn't find anything in english but the mobile booking for doctor's visits so it's it's literally it's really enabling it to, to to for booking using using your phone or using you know online rather than having to phone use the phone redox healthcare providers and vendors digitally share data so which is important because still healthcare is very sensitive very confidential people don't want to reveal their data so i think redox allows the two together in a, in a kind of ecosystem or community uh it's private network and so that's that's important it's probably it's very important in fact if you keep it into an ecosystem or a network and then in the healthcare innovation on the ai or artificial intelligence machine learning side again this, this is an arbitrary allocation i mean a classification it wasn't meant to be there's they probably do other things but notable i remember listening to the notable podcast or the notable, the um, I think it was on Anderson Horowitz's podcast, and the CEO of an notable got on, and he goes, you know, when you walk into the doctor's office and you got to fill out the forms and you get a paper clip, you get a big, is it like a binder, a uh, clipboard, and you got to fill out all the forms every time. And I was like, whoa, did he just come to the Middle East? Because I was I was living in Qatar at the time, and I had just gone to the doctor, and it was like he described what I had just gone through. So that's basically. You get notifications when you walk in the doctor's office. It's an automated workflow. The, the doctor spends less time, uh, you know, recording information and more time with patients. That's what back then. This was two years ago. This is almost three years ago. But notable, uh, you go to their website now, and it's pretty dynamic, much more dynamic. And uh, but that that's kind of the genesis of when you walk into the doctor's office. And it goes right to the back office paperwork, filling to the provide healthcare provider, whatever the you know in the U.S., making sure the notifications get sent to um, insurance and so forth. And so that that that's very notable. <laughs> it's very notable. Cuventus, I like Cuventus. I, I didn't get much more out of their website looking at it yesterday, and uh, but it's predicting patient patterns and and you know so the, to particularly for ERs is important so they can they can have enough of, uh, reserve of blood and other you know res supplies and also for staffing you know know your peaks and peaks and valleys of of um, you know to improve when when to staff people the virtual you know virtual the types of staff and if you've got ups and downs in your your expected expected um, uh, flows of you know again you can't predict when there's accidents but Basically, you would improve your staffing and the care that you can provide. And that, that, that goes along. So artificial intelligence uses the data and then, and then spits back the dashboards, probably for the hospital administrators. Now, going back, Laura did work as a hospital or healthcare administrator. That can be very helpful for the back office people, that kind of a tool. Lean tasks, they use uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning to help hospitals. This thing called IQ for operating bed, rooms and beds. So again, very similar predicting patterns. Um, and how to help them. And, and, and they, if you go to their website, they say they've got partnerships with four or 500 healthcare, major healthcare uh, hospitals across the US. So again, very important space. 
Uh, Suki, I like this one. It's artificial AL, uh, it should be AI, and, and NLP, natural language processing. So this is voice-enabled doctor's assistant. So it literally says, um, please book patient X for um, surgery. She's consented to surgery. And that's literally what they're using. The, the doctor speaks kind of the, kind of the uh, Alexa or Siri of, of um, you know, for the doctor. So the doctor can speak in and, and using, and obviously knowing the words, the lingo, uh, the duolingo, not the, let's, not the language company, but the lingo of the doctor. Like, so that actually would be very helpful to a lot of doctors. And I'm going to rec recommend that to some people that, that I know from my podcast. But anyway, uh, then the last category was called, I just call it specialty, anything, you know, others. This is again, arbitrary classification, Labster. This is really, really cool. And I remember seeing the video and they literally, it's kind of like some futuristic film where they put their hands into the virtual reality and they're doing the lab testing in the lab. Like, you know, um, I don't know, you know, obviously they need to know the chemistry components, but using the virtual reality to uh, do the, to mix chemi chemicals in the lab, but virtually. That was pretty cool. So Labster, virtual labs to help us uh, stem. So they're working with a lot of universities back then. I, I think now, this was two, three years ago. Now they're probably raised, I think they've raised over 250 million. They're, back then they barely just got, I think they were just starting. It was like 10 million. And they had a, a, a video, you know, a, a, just getting there off the ground. I think now they're per, more pervasive. Everly Well, um, in-home health tests. So giving people resources to help them um, in home and to do testing, but not having to go to the doctor's office. And then Vita Health. Personalized on-demand health coaching and programs. So I think it's, it's probably probably geared to the employer uh, companies and you know helping them monitor their health or their employees' health. So moving on, healthcare venture capital. Now again, working with investor relations in Digifarm, particularly Digifarm. I worked for nearly six seven months with Digifarm, and I I scan the globe and you know I. I got to understand who are, you, you tend to see them often uh, all the time, uh, repeatedly in, in, in investments of, or investing in st healthcare startups. So even today, some of these names are still coming up <laughs> and they're still coming. There's a lot of new ones, but uh, in healthcare venture capital, there's some, some names. And so I went to give, give Laura some ideas on the healthcare venture capitals because as I've said in past podcasts, if you go and drill down on their portfolio companies, you'll see who they're investing in. And that's actually who you want to work for. You want to find those startups within the portfolio that you can reach out to and say, hey, I've got this experience and you know, do you need whatever it is. And she, in her case, healthcare administration, she could become an expert in one of those software like Juventus and help the hospital whose investee is, you know, who say, let's say Aisling Capital here. Let's say they invested in Bethesda Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, or wherever, you know, and, and she went to work for them and she used the, she became an expert in Cubenta software, well, you know, staffing patterns of, you know, patterns of movement of patient <laughs> traumas or whatever. Put those three together. Aisling says, yeah, we, we've got a, they need your kind of expertise. I mean, it takes some work, but that's kind of the thought is, is to, to look at the portfolio companies are there any in the portfolio of the venture capital company that you could work for? Or, I mean, she's not a, she's not a physician. So working for them directly and helping them advise them on their investments, probably not the role you'd get, but the portfolio companies is that's where the, you know, that's where the ticket is. So the, not the ticket, but that's where I, I think the golden, the golden ticket or the, the goose that laid the golden egg is in the portfolio companies uh, that may need someone with expertise in various, in her case, healthcare administration. So Ballast Ventures out of Florida, BFV Partners, Aisling Capital, Pivotal Bio Ventures. These are not all Florida, just the Ballast one. I just gave a, you know, again, a sample. Aisling Capital, Eric's Bioscience, still, I see them often. Orby Med, see them often. Longitude Capital, still see them. And Oak, HCFT, so healthcare and fintech. They, they're still there. You always see Oak come up in, in, not always, but any given week, I could probably go and share my Strictly VC newsletter from last week. One of them, I bet you see some, one, one or more of these names in the healthcare uh, funding. 
So as I said, the portfolio companies, that's where the, I believe, for, particularly for non-tech people or non, you know, real, real professionals, health uh, PhDs or physicians, Go into the companies, you know, the healthcare, go into the portfolio companies. So this revealed a selection based in Florida, not, not necessarily health, but Neosis there in Miami. Robotics, for, oh, this was robotics for healthcare. I guess these were, these were healthcare related. Yeah, these were healthcare related in under the venture capital portfolios. And so I just did it. I think back then I just looked for any that were based in Florida. I looked at their, I don't know who these, I can't even remember who the, the, the venture capital company was invested but I found these, Tissue Tech, based out of Miami, very specific, regenerative, amniotic tissue-based products. I mean, this is very, very technical from a science perspective. But if you're working in that field, probably just something like you, just like that, you, you don't even think about it. Probably a biologist or a, chem, a biochem, someone in that field, Iris. I like the name because our dog is Iris, but they're in Pensacola, Pensacola, Florida, and they do ret iris screen, iris appropriately named for the eye, retinal screening. And then Molecular MD was the company at the time. Now, as I went to their website yesterday, they were acquired by a company called Icon. And again, molecular diagnostic tests. So this is very, very granular, very specific. You know, I, again, maybe really relevant to what Laura was doing previously. As you'll see from the slides, she's no longer in healthcare. But you know, these are very specific. So if I was in that field, this would be very helpful. If I'm not, move on. So this is the last part of the advice: um, LinkedIn outreach. And I, I do this. I do this for myself still today. When I reach out to different people for my podcast, when I reach out for to investors, when I'm working with companies, when I'm reaching out for developers to help find developers, I, you know. These are what I do. I do these steps. I prepare a 300 character introduction. Keep it simple. So for Laura's case, you know, she worked for healthcare administration. I would have, I gave her a, a sample 300, 300 characters because you only have 300 characters and it's free. I said, it's free. You don't have to pay for LinkedIn premium and send in mails. For, for me, to me, in mails are just no different than an email. It's very impersonal. And I know they're trying to sell something. But, but if your company can be very targeted, and I, I used to remember, I remember getting, I, want to, I just want to share this because I used to get emails from Siemens. In, I used to get in-mail in LinkedIn from Siemens. And Siemens was a big equipment contractor, that, a, a big contractor we used in, the, in Qatar Solar. So they did a lot of the major equipment. They did some of the software. And I get these, <laughs> I get these email, in-mail. I'm like, God, how do they know I was a CFO of this major plant? And I realized that, you know, how it was working. You can target that. Like you can target Facebook ads and Google AdWords. You can do the same in LinkedIn and, and, and find people that are CFOs of, of equipment, major equipment manufacturers. So I'd get these, is it time to repair your equipment or in repairs and maintenance? Anyway, so it's free to use a personalized LinkedIn message. Now it's free today, maybe in, maybe in a year's time, two years time, they'll change all that. But so you use the LinkedIn personalized message to connect on your mo on your phone. It's a little different than on the on the desktop. And then after they accept your um, connection request, see a lot of people. Some people do. They just send out connect. And it's a standard thing. Ellen Ellen R and because my initials come up. Whatever your profiles, it comes up. Ellen R would like to connect with you. Something like that. And it's very generic. Versus hi Jim. Um, I see you guys are working in healthcare administration. I've got 20 years experience healthcare. I've got 20 years of experience in healthcare administration. There's a big difference than, hi, LNR would like to connect. So that personalized message, um, I think is a better, I think it's just, it just connects people better. They're not necessarily going to accept your, your uh, request, request, but when they do, you ask for permission to send your resume, your CV or your resume, instead of just blindly said, again, you know, I, I used to do it. I didn't know what I didn't know, but when I first started in 2018, when I first started using LinkedIn to connect with blockchain, uh, blockchain investors, I would just send them all the information, our pitch deck, right in, right in LinkedIn. <laughs> it wouldn't go anywhere. Then I, I changed that. And I started requesting them. Would you, with your permission, I'd, I'd be happy to send you uh, our, our pitch deck. Same with the resume. Same, uh, happy to send you my phone number. Happy to, happy to send you the Zoom coordinates. But get their permission first. 
And then number four, just use email to send your resume or cover letter. Take them, you know, take it to the third level of contact versus just sending it all on LinkedIn because a lot of people it's awkward. They don't, you know, how do you download? You know, go to email. Okay, Laura has made a career pivot. Like you go to her, you go to her LinkedIn profile, and I absolutely, I was shocked. I was, I, I was, I had fun. I didn't, I didn't know what she was doing. I don't, you know, I, I don't know all the things that she's doing, but she's pivoted. She's done new things, not healthcare administration. And hats off, Laura. I, I was, I was pleasantly surprised. Really, not shocked in a bad sense. I was shocked. Like, wow, this is cool. I so based on that. I've said, Laura, my, my new recommendations are to take your career pivot and now go do some explainer videos for that. Use social media. I think you need to expand your footprint. I don't know. I don't follow you on, on social media, but if you're not doing it, here's an opportunity. If you are doing it, great. Hats off, Laura. And then a newsletter. Create a newsletter. Get people in your community talking and sharing and exchanging ideas. Create a newsletter. And there are plenty of resources for that. So let's looking at Laura, Laura's um, Laura's um, LinkedIn profile. I, you know, top floor. I guess the FL ambassador, top Florida ambassador for LinkedIn site administrator. I, I don't know. What the, I, I gotta imagine, you know, she's an ambassador for LinkedIn influ, uh, You know, people for on LinkedIn. So that's great. Somebody's chosen that. That's uh, you know, it stands out. It stood out to me. There's a star and black lettering bold. Then rover.com, that's the dog uh, site. <laughs> she lists as, a, I'm a fur baby. House sitter, I guess she did some of that work. It looks like for a couple of years, she's been house sitting and, and she does things on, there's some video and I think helping others. Uh, Medium, I've published on Medium several articles and it looks like she's she's part of their creator program, which is my, my camera here shaking because the table's shaking. So she's part of the creator program on Medium. Uh, a company called Growth Machine, uh, SEO content marketing. She's doing some of that. Affiliate marketer, a company called Evergreen or Ev Evergreen, Evergreen and Dub. And then another thing she's put as a social media social media agent. So none of that has to do with healthcare. All of that seems like it just she's really got you know a lot uh, happening, which is important. In my view, it's important, kind of the Gary Vee philosophy of 27 balls in play. And if five of them drop or fail, you've still got 22 or 17 drop versus just one. And it fails. You got not, what do you have? So anyway, so my recommendation or additional ideas based upon your career pivot, create some explainer videos. Use record on Zoom like I'm doing this channel. Record on Zoom. You get the audio which or the video, which you can use post on YouTube. You can post it on uh, TikTok Reels, uh, TikTok. You can post it on uh, Instagram Reels, and then the the audio that you create. So the explainer videos. I don't explaining on influencer marketing, explaining people how to use SEO, explaining the the benefits of dog sitting, the better what to look for, the five steps, the dog when they poop, when they pee, you know they pee to feed them. You know, the, on the walk to cut their hair. I don't know. Explain your videos related to the things you do. You have lots of opportunities to post that on social media. So you expand your footprint from the stuff you're doing, Laura, all that stuff, maybe the explainer videos, whatever, but expand your footprint to regularly post on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever. Create one or more chat. You could create one or more chat rooms. Clubhouse, Twitter Spaces, Facebook Live, and invite people from those various things that you're doing and get them on to talk about, get experts, get some Rover people on talking about dog care, talk about the people how they don't clean up their dog poop, talk about Paris. I mean, I, I remember going to Paris and there's no law against dog pooping. They poop everywhere. The dogs are pooping everywhere on the streets. Um, and then, you know, I, I remember going to New York and there's like signages right on the, right outside of buildings please curb your dog <laughs> means let them poop or pee on the curb, not on the, on the sidewalk. So there's an incredible amount of material you could create from the stuff you're doing and post it. Great explainer videos on dog walkers. I, Laura, I think there's a huge opportunity. And I'm not saying you're not doing it. I don't know. I'm just saying from what I can see, I think there's a huge opportunity. So I just said, you know, chat rooms, clubhouse, 
Twitter Spaces, Facebook Live. And you can record that and then post it on other, other avenues, other channels. Newsletter. If you create a newsletter with your network of some of those five or six things that you're doing, and each one you could have a newsletter, I don't know, I mean, or one letter newsletter of all the things Laura's doing, Laura the hubris, Laura's hubris, <laughs> Laura's hubris, I don't know. You know, Laura's hub, call it, you know, Laura's Huber hub, I don't know, something like that. But you know, there's so many resources, free. There are free basic newsletters you can create from MailChimp, HubSpot, MooSend, Benchmark Email, SendInBlue, Sender.net, Stripo, <laughs> Stripo, GetResponse, MailJet. But I mean, look, there's so much you can put on a newsletter. All the stuff you're doing, you can cross post things that people that are in, in, in the space of the, you know, Mark SEO, whoever, innovation, Floridian news. You could do football news on your newsletter. The games are coming up. Uh, and, you know, there's tons of football. I guess now baseball. You know, there's so much. There's my dog barking. But there's so much you can put in a newsletter or not. Just keep it simple. One or two facts and have it regularly do it. The, the simpler, the better, actually. So that that's kind of, you know, Laura, that's it. I mean, I, I don't know enough. And if you and I had a chat, I'm sure we could probably come up with more ideas. But that's episode. That was um, that concludes my slide presentation. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and just, you know, conclude here because Laura really hats off because you're doing some amazing things. But I, let me just go back to my, my notes here because not much further I can add. You know, the pivot you've made away, Laura, from healthcare administration, congrats. Thanks. Congratulations. Let's thank you. Laura seems to ascribe, as I said earlier, I, I kind of touched on this. She ascribes or prescribes to the Gary Vaynerchuk philosophy of having 27 balls in play. If 25 fail, you still have 12 more to rely upon. If you focus on one and it fails, what do you have? I mean, it can be pretty dark. So it seems like Laura's pretty active. She's, it seems like she's having a lot of fun. If you look at her LinkedIn profile, she's having a lot of fun. Although Laura has made a pivot away from healthcare, innovation is, I'm going to repeat this because I've said it and I'll continue saying it, innovation in the health sector Healthcare sector has been abundant, particularly since COVID and, you know, the life sciences, biosciences, synthetic. I've learned these words, synthetic biology. I'm, again, I'm not an expert. I'm not a health expert, but I've learned about synthetic biology. The health tech, med tech, innovation is off the charts and investments have followed. You know, had Laura stayed in this field, I would have, I just would have gotten more, I would have deep, deep dove. I would have made a deep dive, deeper dive into to more recent innovation in healthcare space. I'm not going to do it here, but there's been a ton of funding in, in VC, venture capital funding. And that includes the 15 billion, not million, but $15 billion SPAC or special acquisition, uh, special purpose acquisition vehicle, that, a deal that involved Ginkgo Bioworks. And uh, an old colleague of mine is the CFO there, Mark Dimitrik. And they raise 15 billion through their SPAC and they don't have that much turnover, but they, they're into synthetic biology and incredible. I saw, the, I saw the CEO speak, the CEO of Ginkgo Bioworks, uh, Jason Kelly. He was a keynote speaker last September at the TechCrunch Disrupt event. And, and he just talked about how they, you know, think of the dye using biology, using synthetic biology to, you know, to recreate, to create using natural materials to create the dye in your genes. And that, so that they're like looking at everything um, that biology can, to, you know, into the real world and really, and really recreate it from nature and not from, uh, you know, bad, harmful chemicals. And that same TechCrunch, um, that same TechCrunch disrupt uh, presentation or event, it, it featured the BioNTech CEO and co-founder, Ugur Sahin. Now, if you don't know BioNTech, BioNTech is the, they collaborated, collaborated with Pfizer to develop uh, the COVID vaccine. So, you know, I, I tend to, I, I still have an ear or an eye or, you know, when things are going on in that space in healthcare, um, because it's, I think it's so important. And so, as I said, if Laura had stayed in healthcare, I probably would have updated and been gone very granular on some of the, the, um, the recent innovation. Anyway, as I've outlined in my past episodes, my career advice is not centered around finding a job or referring you to a potential open role. Uh, I, you know, I have a I have a pretty extensive network, but it's 
it's it's it's it's it's fragmented. My network is based on different, you know, healthcare. My past work in oil and gas, I don't healthcare. My past work with health healthcare companies. My past work in blockchain. My past work in in big four as an auditor, a CFO, oil and gas. So it's very fragmented. So I don't, I can't tap into my network. It's a lot. Of, it's I don't tap into my work, my network to give referred jobs. But the career advice, at the same time, it's not a cookie cutter. One size does not fit all. It really depends on a lot of factors that include your past experience, your past education, your current interests and hobbies, your location, where you're, where's your geog geographically located. And even if the individual has, sometimes probably don't have access to reliable internet. And, you know, I, I, I got to hand, hand, uh, hand it to my colleagues in Ukraine. I, my former colleagues in Ukraine, I worked there for two years. And then five years in off working back and forth uh, in Simferopol and, and Crimea. Like I know, I, now I don't understand how anybody can work there. It's going to be a long time. But anyway, so a lot of job seekers don't have the same access to the internet that, that other that some, some others do. So, you know, they they, they don't even, might even not be able to subscribe to newsletters if they don't have a, a regular uh, you know email regular access to the internet. So. It depends on the individual situation. But anyway, I, wanna, I don't want to belabor the point. Thank you, Laura, for giving me a very, very beneficial uh, uh, Will You Review My CV episode. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Have a great day and stay safe.